Hello, my name is Charlie Dar. Today I'm going to be showing you how to build a high elven docks complex in Minecraft. Let's get started. So let's take a look at our high elven docks complex here. As we can see, we're in a boat and we can, of course, guide our boat into our docks here. We can get out pretty much wherever we want to here. If you want to, you can. Whoop. Did that just. Never mind. Um. If you want to, you can also use some of the High Elven ship tutorials. I've published three of those. You could perhaps uh, dock a ship here, a couple of small ships here. And of course, it has room for, I think, four ships at most on either side here, if you want to as well. If you don't want to use this for just your boat, if you want to add a few more things to that, you can do that. And of course, it follows the conventions I've established for uh, my, my flavor of high elven architecture here. As we can see, we have a couple of elven statues off to the side here, and the big central statue, the one with the water pot, I showed you in a previous tutorial. It's, of course, well placed here because it's just, you know, it's pouring out its, its water into the ocean. And today I put this um, particular build inside of a standard Minecraft world so you can see how you might be able to use it. Because uh, back here, the entrance is a little bit above uh, the water level by uh, how many blocks? By what? One, two, three, by about four blocks over here. Let's take a look at one of the entrances. I didn't, uh, I forgot to trim, trim the trees out of this. Uh, but we have our entrance here. And we can, of course, uh, walk down the piers. We have this, the central connecting pier here. And we have uh, stairs at various intervals here that we can walk down to our dogs. Of course, the wood is placed just right at water level for easy access to get in and out of your boat. And there are little, uh, little walkways and, and pathways back here for you to access your boat. So you can walk down over here or over here or just, uh, you, you know, down here if you want to. You could do it, do a little spot of fishing here if you wanted to. Uh, but because um, uh, it's one of these builds that you're going to have to find a specific spot in your world to put one. Like I, f I loaded this world from scratch and flew around for a while until I found this spot over here. It maybe took about five minutes to find a decent spot. Like so, that I thought was an, a nice place to put an, an Elven Docks complex. Uh, but if you don't already have a spot picked out here for this, so I'll give you dimensions in the later part of the tutorial, but you would have to do uh, quite a bit of terraforming to find a decent spot. Uh, speaking of also, uh, while we're here, I want to show you, with a couple of potions, we need to take a look at... Um, uh, what's going to be below the water level, because, uh, as with all Minecraft worlds, um, wherever you are going to build this particular docks is going to be different from everybody else. So you might have perhaps a deeper ocean over here, or a more shallow coastline, depending on where you've done that. So this is designed here to have the docks uh, extend down, just from here, all the way down to your seabed. Like you can see how, how the posts here, they just follow the contours of the seabed all the way around here, as does the cobbled deep slate behind that. Just like so here. Uh, this isn't, I mean, this is kind of an optional step. You could just, you know, have it have it uh, cut off uh, down here if you want to, to, to save yourself some wood and materials. But if you want to go to the extra mile and have your docks complex, you know, look just a little bit nicer, like you put, uh, like you put more effort into it, uh, you can extend it down uh, from the coastline to follow the contours of the seabed. So I just wanted to point that out uh, before we get away from this here, because I think uh, now that I've given you a good view of the docks complex to see if you want to build one and everything, uh, we are now going to s uh, flip over to the tutorial world itself and take a look at uh, the materials list and the dimensions and everything else. All right, so here we are in the tutorial world. Here's the reference model. It doesn't go all the way down like I just showed you, but that's because behind that here, here here's the pattern uh, that we'll take a look at later, that all you have to do is just extend this down as far as you want to go 
or as much materials as you want to to uh, get down to the bottom of your seabed. Here's the back of it, uh, n not attached to, to anything back here. You can see the, the entrances are raised up a little bit back here from the coastline. So I think it's designed to be, um, how many blocks is that going to be above the water level? Uh, the water level was right here as we saw. So if I just uh, take this around through here. Your stairs are uh, what, three blocks? Well, two, two, or two or three blocks above the, the water level there. If, uh, if that's not enough, you can always remove these stairs here and just extend the pattern out and just have, uh, uh, have it um, come out up here. You'll have to adjust that depending on wherever exactly you want to build that. I can't really do that in the tutorial because everyone's coastline is, of course, going to be different. One of the reasons I haven't done a docs tutorial up until now for this because I was somewhat confused about how I was going to try and explain the first part there with all the the contours and everything and give you a build I think would be a good size but also suitable enough for anyone to build it anywhere. Uh, all right, so uh, let's take a look at the overall dimensions. Uh, so if you do want to build one of these and you found a good spot, you need to mark off something like uh, 81 wide, 67 long, and 73 blocks tall. Well, I don't think height's going to be an issue. It's going to be 81 by 67. It's, it's 81 across the front here, and it's 67 going back from there. And uh, that doesn't uh, mark out the exact numbers for the foundation. It also includes, uh, I think it also includes the, the overhang here for the entrance and everything. So it would probably, probably come out a few blocks there. Uh, if you do want to build one of these, though, you are going to need uh, quite a bit of materials. Uh, these materials here, the numbers only cover this, this particular reference model. If you want to extend down your wooden poles and your deep slate down to the, the seabed, you're going to need e even more than, uh, than what's listed here. Uh, but these are uh, the materials you're going to need. Quite a bit of uh, wood and deep slate and stone bricks and a bit of sandstone. I think the, the sandstone is for the statue. And all this other stuff here. You can, of course, use blackstone instead of obsidian. Any color stained glass you want. I prefer light blue myself. Uh, the gold ore and the beacons here are for the statues. If you don't want to expend a beacon for the statue, you can just put a, a nice little diamond block there for that instead. And uh, these blocks here are optional. Uh, these are uh, any block you want to fill things solid. So we've got the, it's the, it's the double steamed uh, smooth stone slabs. And that number there is, uh, I've optimized this building right here to just include the exterior and the, the visible interior parts. Uh, the invisible parts, in other words, the blocks that are going to be interior to the building that you wouldn't normally see, that are just filler blocks, I have filled with these materials here. Like, like, you know, if we're looking here, we would just see the cobbled deep slate, but behind this, we would have the filler blocks. Uh, but since there's like, uh, what, uh, more than 14,000 of those, um, I optimized this bill to save you some materials. So you, this is, uh, or rather, the, the numbers of materials I listed here are the bare minimum. Uh, you, won't need, uh, you won't need any less than that, I don't think, to do the structure here. Uh, because of the, 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 the filler blocks and everything. One of the reasons I've chosen this texture here is because it's going to be really easy uh, for you to look at things and sort of, you know, and count numbers as we go. I'll count some numbers, of course, with the red carpet like I always do. Uh, but for other things, if you're just a visual tutorial person and you really don't ever listen to me talk about this, you can just, you know, uh, look at it and pause the video and build it off of that. Uh, so I think for this we should probably start. We should probably start where? Let's start here at uh, at the back corner. I think so. This is going to be where one of our entrances is going to be. Right here. And oh, I should also mention before we start that the the world download is available in the video description for both Java and Bedrock versions. So if you need to come here and take a look directly at this, if the video isn't good enough, you can, of course, uh, do that. Um, okay, so let's start right here. We'll place, well, let's start right here. We'll place, what, one, two, three, four, five, six, 
seven, eight, nine. Then we'll turn the corner here for two, and then one, and then two, two, and then a diagonal of three, and then one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four, one, two, three, one, two, three, diagonal, and then two, and then one, two, three, four. And uh, starting here, we have our first um, tree trunks for our dogs. And these are all done, almost all done, at an interval of three. Uh, you can see here, three here, three there, three there, three there. It's only, I think, at the ends down here that we'll have two, and then three, three again, three again, and then two right there. And then on the inside corners, I think uh, the, the numbering might vary a little bit there. But we'll take a look at that when we get over to the base for the statue. Uh, so from here, it's going to be all the way down there. It's going to be what? 1, 2, 3, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 15, 15 17, 18, 18, 20, 21, 22, 23, 24, 7, 30, 33, 6, 37, 38. I think that was 38. And then 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. Yeah, and then to get all the way, all the way back down here. Just, uh, you can probably just count five, five blocks over from that and then place that one there. And then one, two, three, four. Four again. And then a long run of one, two, three, six, seven, eight, nine, twelve, fifteen, eighteen blocks. And then one, two, three, four, five, six. Seven, eight, nine, ten blocks there. And from here we skip two and then three, three, and three. And that was uh that was how many blocks over from point here? One, two, three, four, five on the six the sixth block there. And then one, two, three, four, five, six. Well actually from this point here, if we take right in the middle. If we draw this here as a center line, right down through the building, uh, this building is uh, thankfully symmetrical on both sides. So I think you can easily see that. So if we draw an imaginary red line all the way through this, what we have on the left side over here is gonna be a, fl a mirrored image of what we have on the right side over here. So all those numbers we just did over here, you can just flip and count them out again to go along, along that side there. Now we should also I think you can I think you can see these. It's just one, two, two, two here and from what? Two, three. Well, from this point here you you could count over for six blocks. And then just extend this all the way over to your center line here. Right there. And then just uh then just keep going over there. You can get you can get the numbering for that if you if you start over there and go around this side first and then go around that side. And once you once you turn the corner here, you can just run a straight line there. Because you'll have already uh, done the numbering for that. So let's take a look at uh, at this first phase here. I do a lot of counting because you know it's it's literally foundational. You want to make sure that you count this phase at least twice perhaps three times, to make sure you've got all the numbering correct. Because if you if you make a mistake on this phase, it's going to cause you problems later on. It's always the first phase that's the most difficult, getting everything established for the footprint of the building. Um, and I think, uh, actually, th this phase should have been built uh, underwater, actually. Because we haven't built the docks yet, remember? So... Uh, that's going to be what? The water level's here, right there. So this first flip phase was one, two, three, four blocks down under the water. This phase, uh, this phase level uh, down here is what we just built with uh, the deep slate and, and the wood and everything. So that's four blocks below the level of the water. So the water level is, is here. So this would be, counting the water block, it would be five blocks down. So if this is the first block of the surface level of the water, you want to count one, two, three, four, 
five blocks down from the surface level of the water. All right. Probably should have said that earlier, but uh, I did say it on phase one, so I'm assuming that you watch phase one pretty much all the way through before you start building, at least I hope you do. Uh, and after that, uh, the next several phases are exactly the same phase we just did. What we're doing here is we're just stacking things up the next level higher. So if this was five blocks down in the water down here, this is going to be four blocks down in the water here. This is going to be three blocks down. This phase here is four blocks down. And this phase here is five blocks. Of course, we have our, our wood here, which means this is the, the surface level of the water where this wood is. And all the numbering is still the same for everything back around here. So let's try and start, let's try and start back here at this corner. That's probably a good enough place to start, I think. Uh, you can see on top of the cobbled deep slate, what we're doing is replacing the obsidian uh, or the blackstone. I assume you're probably using blackstone for this, just like so. Same numbering all the way around for that. And here you can see we're just connecting um, everything for uh, the wood for the, uh, oh, I think there's, there should probably be, well, this is one of these invisible blocks that you can't see. But I think this uh, this here should have been should have been uh, black stone, but you can make it wood. I think it's going to be one of those invisible blocks anyway, probably. Uh, but underneath here, you can see we just have we're just boxing it all off, connecting the wood around the pier, all the way out to the uh, uh, wooden post that you place down. All the way around here, we do have a couple of extra blocks right here for you to be able to to walk around the entirety of the docks. Just like so there. And then over here, we have uh, a couple of uh, three uh, wide uh, wood blocks here. And this, of course, is the, the base for our, well, it's almost out of range for our uh, very tall elven statue, the one that's holding the pot of water. This is the base that uh, he's standing on. Right there. And then back here you would just want to connect that. And of course our, our center line is going right through. Right through the building there. So everything will be symmetrical now on both sides. All right, so let's take a look at uh, the next level here. It looks like there might be a couple of stray, stray obsidian blocks in here. I'm, I'm reasonably sure these aren't visible in here, so you don't have to worry about building those. Uh, but on the corner here, you can see we're just extending the obsidian up for this. Same numbering that we've done previously, except around here now, we have, uh, I'm, I'm pretty sure, that obsidian there is going to be on top of the uh, the one I marked over there with the, with the red and everything. So uh, what? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven blocks over from that, we have uh, our first little uh, staircase right here with uh, some sandstone and uh, some sandstone stairs and endstone blocks, just like so. And then it's going to be another one, two, three four, five, six, seven, and another staircase. All these staircases measure out the same. I mean, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, and another staircase. And then turn for two blocks and put a, put a staircase on the end here. And then uh, on the other side here, you want to just mirror the entire staircase design again, like so. And then turn the corner with your obsidian edging, and from the corner here, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, and a staircase, like so. And uh, that's all the staircases until you get to the center line. And over here, we just want to have a little box for uh, what? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, four, five, six. It's going to be like a seven by seven 
uh, obsidian box, just like so. And uh, of course, this is on our center line, so uh, you know all the numbering for the rest of that. Some of these, uh, you will observe, this one here has an obsidian block, and this one. And on the end of the pier down here, this one and this one also have obsidian blocks. And that's because you may have noticed on the end of our pier, we do have some uh, uh, hi uh, high elven uh, lighting, uh, so sort of like high, high elven light post designs that we're going to be putting there. It adds a little bit uh, of, of interest to the docks and also uh, gives us some lighting. Uh, I think, of course, if you're doing this in survival, you're going you're gonna to need to put down probably a bit more lighting than I've outlined here in the tutorial. Uh, well, I did optimize the infill, but it looks like it didn't quite... Um, I, had, I had to redo the doors a little. That's probably after after I did that. So you can ignore, ignore, these, uh, ignore these, th these blocks inside here. Uh, so back over here on top of the obsidian, we're putting down more, more deep slate. Just like so, cobbled deep slate. You can, if you wanted to make a more interesting pattern, you if you have regular deep slate, you can mix and match this if you want to. Uh, detail here for the stair. Of course, we've got just a chiseled stone, uh, uh, chiseled uh, sandstone block here, uh, and stone bricks behind that, and sandstone stairs behind that. Of course, if you want to use like endstone stairs, you can as well. Uh, I just give you the, the tutorials with uh, suggested materials. You can always change out the color scheme if you like something else for, for your flavor of Elven. Of course, all the staircases are the same. You want to go around and do that on all seven of the staircases. Right here, the two central staircases here, and the other seven over there. For the central statue, another 7x7 seven seven cobbled deep slate. And over here, we have just individual blocks of cobbled deep slate right there. But we're finishing off all these, uh, the ends of the piers now by putting, uh, uh, I think, what, spruce, spruce trap doors on tops of these. It makes, it makes a nice little cap, I think, for these if you want to. If you have a different kind of trap door or if you used a different kind of wood, for these particular things here, you can, of course, uh, make a substitution on that as well. You don't have to use these particular kind of trap doors. They're just my, they're, they're my, like my favorite kind of trap door. Well, it, it's a tie between these and the dark oak. I think I probably like the dark oak trap doors a bit more. But for a docks, I thought uh, something, something a bit cheaper looking was in order for a docks. So, so that's what I went with. Uh, next phase over here. Start over here at our entranceway. So we've got our stair here, of course, for our entranceway, just like so. And here are the stairs and everything behind that. And it looks like there's quite a bit of uh, extra blocks that didn't make the infill for some reason. I'll just go very, very slowly over this so you can see the patterns. I don't think a verbal description of all this mess would uh, help that much. All these things you just kind of have to look at. Uh, over here, of course, we now have the base for the elven statues on the sides. Right here. Uh, I'm not going to go, I'll, I'll show you the slices for these, but I'm not going to go into too much detail on these statues because both sizes of these elven statues already have a published tutorial, and it's done in one of those reverse block by block time lapses. So if you have trouble with the statues, you can refer to that video to aid you in construction of that. Uh, over here on the side now, we have the... Um, the uh, chiseled uh, sandstone blocks here, wrapping all the way around. You are going to need this glowstone that we have in the middle here. Um, I'll show you that on the next phase. It's some. It's a little bit of hidden lighting I worked into the structure. Uh, but if you want to, you can skip that for now, and we'll take a look at it in more detail in the next phase, where it'll be more apparent where you should put that. 
All right, so here's the detail for the little staircases, just like so. Do all the staircases the same and just connect them all with the, the chiseled sandstone all the way around. Uh, out here we have uh, indiv individual blocks of in-stone bricks for our uh, lanterns. Stairs here again. And then the, the last two stairwells in the middle here. Uh, individual blocks of, oh, uh, th that should be, um, okay, my mistake. I was wondering where those were at. These, these should be uh, uh, end stone bricks. Uh, and here's the detail for the central, the central statue. All right, let's take a look at the next phase now. Uh, so what I said about the glowstone, if I just get a little altitude, you can see here I have some full full box of stained glass, light blue stained glass here. Beneath those are some hidden lighting for some, uh, just, just some lighting in the floor to keep too many things from spawning underneath the, the, the little covered pavilion area for the docks. So that's going to be where those are at. We'll take a closer look at the minute, uh, in a minute for those here. Let's take a look here to start with at the entrance. Uh, in fact, let's uh, let's start let's start over here. And uh, some of these design patterns would oh, that's missing. This should um, these should probably be cobbled deep slate back in there. It looks like looks like my optimization of this build was not as good as I thought it was. So that's gonna it's gonna alter the block counts a little bit. Terribly sorry about that, uh, but I'll give you uh, I'll give you views here of this. I think with all the different blocks and everything, it should give you a good idea of exactly what the block counts are. Just looking at it at just at a glance, like so. Now, some of you, uh, if you've done the door, uh, not the door, the the Elven Watchtower tutorial before now, you may recognize that uh, these two things over here are just recycled watchtower designs, at least the exterior is, uh, used here for the docks. Uh, because indeed the, the, the watchtower itself was always intended to be a module. We'll be seeing part of that design again whenever we take a look at uh, Elven walls. What, if you wanna, if you, you know, if you need Elven city walls, I've got something coming up for that. In a while. All right here, detail for the stairs. As you can see, they've, they've, the stairs are gonna be finished on this level here. And then behind that, we're gonna be building the, the, the floor pattern. We'll take a look at the floor pattern in detail in a moment. Let's take a look at the stairs first. Let's do the outer edges, and then we'll work our way to the inside. All right, the detail for the stairs. Take a look here for the central statue. Same details, we're just flipping the stairs for that. Uh, all right, let's go back over here now and take a, take a more top-down view of the floor pattern. So we have our entrance right here, and it goes in here, and then we have a little T intersection where we can we can walk off over here and you can see the floor pattern is really simple. It's just a repeating pattern with uh, the deep slate, the obsidian, and the lapis. And of course, the central feature block has that block of glass, and there is the glowstone below that to give you just a little bit of hidden lighting to keep too many things from spawning around your docks. And of course, once, once we start going down the dock here, the pattern just repeats, just like so, all the way down to the end. So let me give you a good, uh, well, let me give you a more zoomed in, top-down view of this entire half of this, because as we go, remember, it's a symmetrical build around the center line. 
So I'm doing uh, a lot of detail on half the build. And then, of course, relying on you to flip it over and build the same thing again, just over here. All right. Uh, this phase here should be a little bit easier. That last one was a little bit difficult, I know. Uh, but this one here, uh, we're now starting. We, we built uh, the majority of the pier. We built the pier down there and the upper pier here with the stairs and everything. And we're now about to put in the uh, the colonnade. And, of course, uh, the, the uh, rest of the, the foundation for the towers. So here we have our little entranceway. Just like so. Uh, and I suppose I could have, uh, I probably should have extended the, the this pattern here with the lapis and everything one more time down here for or the entranceway. It's a small detail. You can, you can correct that if you want to. Just an extra thing. Uh, but let's take a look at... Um, hmm, where should we start? Uh, well, let's start at the entranceway and then let's swing over here briefly. Take a look at this. This section here. And then uh, the intercolumnation distance, of course, is going to be, for all these columns, uh, without exception, is going to be three blocks. So you can see here, this is, uh, this is our center line here, right there. So every third block, according to the floor pattern you put down, you want to put down one block, or rather I guess it's every fourth block, you want to put down a single block of end stone bricks. You could also use plain sandstone for this if you, if you prefer, if you, don't, if you really don't like the end stone bricks, you could use that. Uh, but it, nobody ever really uses end stone bricks for just anything. And indeed, you probably thought the day would never come when you would be using end stone bricks for anything nice. Uh, but but here we are. Swinging around here. Uh, here's the detail for the, the base of the smaller statue. And then here for the little entrance uh, vestibule inside the uh, the towers. Trying to give you good views of this from all the angles that you might want to see for that. Uh, and once you have that down, the of course, the intercolumnation distance for the rest of the columns and everything is exactly three blocks, just so all the way down, uh, you'll, you'll see that they'll interface with your stairs quite cleanly. Uh, cleanly. On both sides there. It's a small detail here for these little lanterns. We've got uh, two panes of stained glass sticking out on either end of those. For every, uh, what is, how, how many of those? For, for every eight of those we have on the building. And of course, the details back over here for this, just for a repeating pattern. Here's the the central statue, the base for that. All right, next phase. Over here for the entrance again. Uh, swing this way for a moment. Take a look at, uh, oh, hmm. that should probably really be uh, blackstone for that block there. I think that's probably going to be missing on this side here, too. Yeah. Well, it, it's, a, it's a minor detail. Well, no, I think that probably, that probably follows the pattern of the... Uh, well, I guess it doesn't matter. It can, it can stay. Cobble deep slate. It's just a. It's just one block. I could go either way on that. Uh, so here, of course, uh, you've already put down the columns for these. So you just want to go around and for all these columns, you're just going to be stacking them straight up for the next several phases. I forget exactly exactly how many. 
otherwise I would tell you. Uh, but over here, let's take a look at uh, the, the details for our little entrance vestibule. Take a look at the interior here. For that, and then just down down the pier here, stack up all the blocks till we get to the end where we have just a couple of more blocks, two by two, down here on the end. And uh, glowstone and chiseled sandstone here for these little uh, ornamental lanterns. All eight of those, do them the same. And uh, detail over here for the footprint of the statue like so. And uh, for the rest of the tutorial, I'll save a bit of time. I'm just going to give, I'm not going to talk directly about the statue. I'll just pause over it and show you the slice of those. Here, here was the one over here for the, the smaller statue. Otherwise, uh, these statues already have uh, their own tutorial videos. All right. Next phase, start over here at the entrance, just like so. Sling of blocks of obsidian here. Swing around here, take a look at the detailing. Take a look inside now. And then your colonnade all the way down, down to here, and the detail for the lantern, all eight of those, and uh, the detail for the statue. All right, next phase. Over here at the entrance, uh, right here. Uh, for a lot of these blocks in the tower, most of them are going to be going straight up for the most part now that you've established the footprint of that building, well, uh, of that section of the larger building. Extend your colonnade all the way down the docks. And then these are the last two little details for the lanterns. Just some, some double stairs stacked up right there. Do all eight of those the same. And then all eight of the, the little ornamental lanterns, will uh, that subsection will be complete. All right, next phase over here by the entrance again. A lot of it just going straight up. This should be a fairly easy phase, I think. Then extend your colonnade up all the way to the end. And we'll go on to the next phase here. Everything's mostly going straight up on this phase. 
Shouldn't be uh, shouldn't be any surprises in here. At the end of the dock here, we want to have a little lintel of upside down stairs, double stairs, right there, three blocks across. All right, next phase, detail here for the entrance. We're forming our, our little graceful high elven arches here with those overhanging blocks. And then all the way down here, the detail for the end. All right, next phase here. Detail for the entrance. And uh, several more blocks here now. You can see we're beginning to form the uh, the arcade for um, our pavilion and everything. Of course, you, you remember we had some uh, we have uh, some some Gothic arch designs here. Well, I mean we only have a couple of blocks to do it, so they're really simple arches. Take a look at the entrance vestibule though, so you can get the detail for that. And then over here, I know this looks complex at first glance, but every one of these is done exactly the same. You have central blocks of obsidian directly on top of this, two blocks of endstone bricks on top of that, uh, rather to the side of that, and on the interior here, you have these two stairs facing each other. And that's just a repeating pattern that goes all the way down the central arcade and the two here for the two uh, pavilions. All right, let's take a look at the uh, how that ends down here. Just like so. And we'll go on to the next phase. So over here, uh, capitals, uh, upside down stone brick stairs here, just some simple capitals. Uh, over here, we want to finish off our, our Gothic arch, our, our little pointy high elven arch, with a central block here. And then filling it all in behind that with uh, this assemblage. Uh, I believe for the arcade, uh, the uh, what we just did with the previous phase, you want to just stack that up twice. You can see we have we have the double stairs in here, and the same detailing along its side here. So just stack that up twice, and here's the detail for the end of the pier. All right, moving along, uh, stack up the stairs here for those capitals. 
and then we're done building our archway. So we're just going clean across with um, the, the cobble deep slate here. And behind that, we have uh, now our wooden beams. Uh, all the wooden beams are going, are connecting directly across on top of these double stairs. On the interior here, they're making little three by three coffered boxes right there. And on top of that, you can see we're finishing off the scheme for our arcade by doing a one to three ratio of in stone bricks and obsidian right there. See, we have these, these little arches going that way and that way and that way. Well, you know, Minecraft this is as, as good of an arch as we can make at that level of detail. That's one of those things, you know, just, you just use your imagination really hard, and it's a, it's a nice, graceful Gothic arch. And uh, let's see, let's see some detail here. There is another beam right there. And follow the same pattern for the uh, the pier arcade right here. It's going all the way down till we get all the way down here. So here is the detail for the end of the pier right there. And we have these half slabs hanging off the sides here because we're getting ready to cap this off with, of course, uh, the long uh, p uh, roof for the pavilion like so and these are going to be uh, what one two three four, five six seven eight nine twelve thirteen fourteen fifteen blocks wide on either side leave uh, leave one block of a very gap right there and do the other one exactly the same and of course the, the other pair over there exactly the same continue the arcade back around And we will go on to the next phase. Here we are. We're putting now uh, the, the, the roof detailing for our entranceway. Right here, just cap that off with uh, end stone bricks. Like so. Leave that open behind here. Oh. Maybe. I'm not really sure why. Why are those blocks are there. We'll have to take a look at that on the next phase. My infilling, my optimization for infilling for this building was not very good. I apologize. Uh, I think it's because I had to, I, I did that and then I had to modify the door here and I didn't do it very well. My apologies. I, because this tutorial has been delayed a bit because I made a big mistake when I did this. I, I put the door below the level of the water somehow when I was doing this. Uh, in the flat world I was building it on, so it was, that was an embarrassing mistake. I had actually started recording that video when I realized that I had done that, so I just had to scrap the whole thing. Because uh, I can't give you a building that's got that big of an error in it. So I had to throw the whole thing out and uh, redo the tutorial world and fix the building and everything. So that, that, that's why there's, there's a mistake here, around here for that. Uh, but anyway, we have uh, overhanging stone bricks, or not stone bricks, in, in stone bricks, just like so, on either side of the pavilion. I believe that the whole thing is capped off with uh, um, uh, dark oak planks behind that, going all the way across. Nice little area for you to walk on right here. Uh, we should take a look at that, uh, take a look at that from below. As you can see, it's just capped off with some simple... Um, planks there. I didn't. I didn't feel like making that just too ornate underneath there uh, because it is. Is it, it? It is a docks. I mean, it's not a palace. It's meant to be. You know, meant to be a working building. Even though it is a high elven building, and they they do spend lots of uh, lots of uh, needless ornate detail on all their buildings. So maybe maybe it should have been done. Uh, but if you want to add a little bit more detail, you could. 
You could maybe hang down some some lanterns, some little blue lanterns or something, or maybe maybe the maybe the standard lanterns from up here. Maybe maybe just every every other or every third coffer you could possibly hang down a lantern. Maybe uh, maybe where the stairs are, if you wanted to, you could you could hang down a lantern here, where where the stairs cross. That's just a, an, an idea I had. Uh, while well, I'm recording this right now, but you don't you don't have to do that. If you want to add extra detail in the coffers, though, you could you could do a little ring around there with some uh, um some what some dark oak uh, trap doors. Yeah. That might look nice, uh, but I didn't do that. But uh, you, you can if you want to, a little extra. And back here, you're just uh, capping the entire thing with uh, with double um, and stone bricks all the way down here. Leave these two hanging off on the side. Just this is directly on the top of these half slabs we placed. And then just uh, uh, slab the entire thing over across the front here. Back along the sides. And then back around here. All right, uh, we've got a couple of free, free, uh, free floating blocks here. I don't especially remember why. Why do we have these free floating blocks? Are they connected to something? Oh, okay. That must be uh, a bit of the uh, bit of the roof hanging out, I think. Hmm. I really don't remember why those should be hanging down like that at this level. That doesn't quite make sense to me. I wonder if that's... Uh, oh. Oh. I know what happened. Okay, yeah. So remember when I said I had to rebuild the entrance? I, I, looks like I made a mistake. On that one that I didn't catch until just now. Uh, we'll, we'll take a look at these these later. Ignore ignore those blocks. They're not there. Uh, those those are not the blocks you're looking for. We want to start. Uh, we want to start back over here with the detailing, just like so. Swing around here, and we're now doing the roof. And it's a simple pattern, every other block, uh, obsidian and deep slate, just like so. Or black stone, you're using that. Back here, and I'm, hmm, I wonder what happened here. I think for, for ease, for just, just to make this easy, just put, uh, just put uh, uh, nine blocks of uh, dark oak planks right there where that red wool is. And, and we're going to call that done. And you can ignore everything else behind that. Uh, I should have gone back and redone the optimization of that when I was making the building. But it looks like uh, I made quite a few mistakes on the entrance for this particular building, and I didn't, even, I didn't even get them all fixed. I did try, though. I'm very sorry about that. Uh, some of these blocks are going to be on the interior and invisible, like, uh, like probably like this stuff here. You could, you could not build that, probably. I, th I think not. And just build uh, build the exterior ones here. Like so, and then we hit the tower. And then continue the pattern on over, over that way. All right, next phase. Or those blocks, they're not there. Um, so here's the de the detail for the doorway. An accent block of glowstone right there in the middle. Uh, 
uh, and we want to do uh, three blocks and then every fourth block we want to do for the roof pattern a block of cobbled deep slate just like you see all the way down both sides right there uh, here we have the this is just the central core for the tower uh, you've already you've already sealed all of this off right there right there with the dark oak slabs so you can ignore just ignore everything else in there it's only focus on the exterior of the building and then here we have the detail for the roof for the pavilion it doubles up on the end here it's the same pattern it's just it's just uh, it's flared out one block on both sides is what is done here All right, uh, next phase, that. not there, it's not there. Um, it, it, it's higher up, um, so right here. Detail for the entrance. There's, a, there's not a block there, maybe difficult to see. Uh, for the roof, we're hanging both both blocks on the inside now and doing the same pattern you just did, except, you know, just, just, just hang them over a block. Same pattern for the pavilion or the docks. Minor different here. And then the end of the pier right here. All right. Next phase, ignore that, it's not, it's not there, it's not there, it should be higher up. Uh, so this here. For the doorway, well, for, for, for the, uh, the capping off of the roof of the doorway, we've been on this doorway for quite a while, but we're, we're almost done with it. And here we've returned to the same pattern that we started with for the roof, every other block, uh, black and gray. And uh, here it looks like this, uh, this should have been placed down lower is finally appearing here. Uh, but you've already fixed that. Uh, at least when I do make mistakes, I often catch them in real time, so. You shouldn't have to redo anything. Uh, detail here for the end of the pier. All right, uh, next next phase here. I think, if memory serves, uh, this this block here, which um, let's take this uh, this block down here should actually be up right there, uh, which means uh, the, these other blocks like 
like that there is going to end up being being that and to end up being that there. Uh, so while I'd like to do these one block slice at a time, if you want to, you can go ahead and build this element to correct my mistake of having it, it earlier. It, uh, um, this little section, I must have won the selection box in MC Edit. I probably selected it right here instead of all the way out here. And when I shifted the entrance up to correct for the water height, it looks like I missed the, the little end of it. Is how that happened, so my, my apologies. Uh, but here's the, de the detail for the, the roofs all colliding with the tower and everything. And for the roof, we're just hanging it in a block on either side again and going back to the, the 1 to 3 ratio for the obsidian and the deep slate. Same detailing over here, all the way to uh, this roof element back here, where it stops, where we're building a, a, a larger roof, capping off the end of the, the elven stuff. This is what I like to do with the elven stuff. I like to, uh, I like to collide multiple roof segments with each other to get, uh, you can get like double, triple, sometimes quadruple overhangs on things. It it really looks quite nice. It's got a um, it's sort of got a, a Southeast Asian flair to uh, the roof design motifs for the high elven stuff. At least the way I do high elven stuff. Uh, of course, uh, I, the reason I do it that way is I always like to have uh, I always like to have matching stuff. So so if you like take variations on a theme to uh, a, a silly extreme. Uh, a benefit from that is to have uh, all your builds can match each other. So if you want to build something from a particular style and have it all be consistent with each other, uh, that's something I recommend doing. Just taking the patterns you've used for a previous build and just expanding it out as much as you can. Just a little free building tip, like halfway through the tutorial. Uh, start over here. Uh, so uh, this here, we uh, I, I will rebuild this one more time, right, uh, right there. That's going to be those those blocks there, and then on top of that, it's going to be uh, that. Now, I'm pretty sure it's going to end up being uh, going to end up looking like looking like that. So you can go ahead and fix that entire thing. I think these two these two blocks here are probably going to end up being chiseled, uh, chiseled sandstone. Memory serves. Maybe not, we'll see. Uh, but here's the rest of the, the detail back here for the tower. Uh oh, why are those sticking out? Oh, okay, I know why. Uh, th these red blocks here, you wanna have that be uh, cobbled deep slate, two extra blocks here that, uh, that weren't showing. You know, I thought I had fixed the entrance really good, but Apparently not. I think I must have done that too late at night and made a, made quite a mess of it. And here to cap off uh, our pavilions, you just have uh, straight runs of uh, whatever this is, and stone bricks, just going straight off in those three directions at the same level here, just, just in line with all, with all that. Connecting to each other. Just a little ridge all the way across until you get down to this point right here. Uh, where it collides with this uh, other larger roof section that we're building down here on the end of the pier. All right, uh, next, next phase, ignoring 
Ignoring all that. Um, so it looks like, what, it was a half slab here? Probably. Okay, so that's going to be, uh, well, I'll just, w w one last time, I'll rebuild the entire, entire section there. So you can see how it should look. Just like that. Uh, and then we're now done building our little pavilions, except for, except for the end of the pier down there. And from this point onwards, we'll be focusing only on the st the, um, uh, the the uh, two towers here, and of course the the statues as well. For those, and yeah, this uh, deep slate cobble deep slate right there where that red wool is. It should match. Uh, this over here is what should have happened, ideally, but you can fix it. Uh, you will have a, a more correct model than, than I do. And I, I do always strive to give you the best possible quality buildings that I can, uh, even if I sometimes fumble around making the tutorials. I know I'm not the best tutorial maker, but I do really I do try really hard whenever whenever I make these. Uh, detail down here for the pier. and the central statue. All right, uh, next level up. I've already shown you how to, how, to, how to fix all that. So as I said, we're gonna be focusing only on the tower and the statue uh, and that roof down there. We're almost finished with that though. And then it will only be the tower and the statue. Uh, now from this point onwards, until we get up to the level of the roof, these towers are gonna have uh, not counting the statue over there, are going to have four-way symmetry. Meaning that if we divide the tower this way with a center line, but then we divide it this way with a center line, what we do in this quadrant over here is going to be the same on all four quadrants. I think you can pretty clearly see that, just like so. Follows the same design as the uh, uh, Elven Watchtower did, like so. And detail down here for the roof for the end of the pier. It's a small roof, so it's pretty simple detailing. All right, next phase. We got uh, so the face of the uh, statue right there, and of course, once you do once you do one quadrant of this, the rest of the tower is exactly the same. It's mostly just going straight up, except for some alternating bands of uh, bricks and, and chiseled sandstone. Uh, so here we're finishing off uh, the the end roof here. With, of course, a ridge line just straight across, overhanging a block on either end. The, ca the characteristic overhanging um, elven roofs that we have here. They're little scalloping shapes. All right, next phase. A minor different design there or some of the cobble deep slate in the core. Otherwise, the rest of that's the same. And uh, detail down here on the end of the docks. We're putting on these little decorative uh, finials. You can go ahead and put, uh, and put stairs right there if you want to, to finish that off on both of those. And that's going to be the entire design for that. And this is uh, one, two, three, and then three by three. All right, uh, next phase. Statue. And here for 
central core, side down stairs, all four sides, and uh, you've already finished this off down here. All right, central statue. Next phase. Uh, this finishes off these statues here. You can, you don't want to spend a beacon on that. You can just put like a diamond block, or if you're really cheap, you can use um, what would be a good block to use. Uh, if you're that one, if you're extremely cheap and you don't want to use the diamond blocks, you can use some very cheap. Uh, what was this called? Light blue glaze terracotta. There for for that. You can also substitute uh, for the lapis on the first phase if you if that was too expensive for you. You can uh, blue glaze terracotta is always a good su a good substitute in my builds and high elven builds in particular for the lapis. So if you wanted to use blue glaze terracotta uh, like for the statues, if you don't want to spend lapis blocks on that, if it's just if it's just too hard to come by for you, you can use that as a substitution. I know, I know. It's I'm like two thirds of the tutorial, and I'm just now telling you about that. But I just now thought of it, so I just I just wanted to remark on that. Where I went along, uh, because I just I simply didn't didn't think about it earlier. Uh, but I need to make a note about that for future tutorials. Since we are just getting started with the High Elven uh, architecture series, quite a few more buildings coming for that. There's some simple details here for the tower. And then uh, quite a bit here for the central statue. All right, next phase. Oh. First, we're done building our statue down there. So uh, from now on, we're just focusing only on the tower and the, cent the central statue until they finish. And I think uh, the central statue will finish before the tower does. And down in here, um, uh, down here where, where this red is, this is where you want to just dump, dump some water buckets right there and then it will it will flow off down there into the sea. Like so, next phase. Uh, for quite a while, all four faces of this tower are going to be symmetrical. So once you do, once you do one quadrant, just do the other four the same, or do do all four the same. Do do the other three. Same. That's not how quadrants work. You can't have five quadrants. And remember, if my cursory glance at the statue here isn't enough, it does have its own tutorial that goes into more depth. Uh, so here for the central, uh, well, the, the, the side towers, like so. Uh, we've got some glowstone featured in the middle. It's not exactly hidden lighting. It, it's featured lighting. You can do both. You can have hidden lighting like we did in the floor down there for the docks. You can also have things like featured lighting where you just put it right there in the middle and make, make a feature out of your lighting. I like to use glowstone for the high elves. I think... Um, uh, it, it matches the, uh, uh, the the sandstone and the endstone rather well with its, its nice little golden hue. Uh, but if you have like sea lanterns or something, you, you could use those. May, maybe your elves are like sea elves instead of high elves and you want to have that detail. You could. It's up to you. And you could possibly use some of the shroom lights if you want to. I haven't used those too much, but those would be a good substitution. If you, do, if you just don't like the glowstone, you can use some shroom lights. All right, detail here for the tower.
Next phase, more detail for the tower. Even more detail for the tower. You guessed it, more tower detail. You know the drill, more tower detail. Rinse, repeat. Running out of things to say. The Highland statue has a very flat expression. Pretty simple detailing here. Even simpler detailing here. Stairs here. Pointy ears for the elves, of course. They have to have big pointy ears, otherwise they're not elves. Dims the rules. Uh, over here, uh, very, very simple detailing. Very simple. You're done with the head over here. Now we're just building the pointy wings at the back. Very stylized pointy wings. Uh, very uh, art deco of the elves. For that, uh, extremely simple detailing. Just a big box with corners on it. Yeah. And whoop. Almost uh, ran over the statue. Go. Upside down uh, stairs all the way around. All the four faces, just like so. Very simple, cobbled deep slate on top of that. And then obsidian on top of that, on top of that cobble deep slate you just put, just throw down some obsidian. In fact, I think you need to do uh, two layers of that. Yeah, two layers 
of obsidian all the way around, big box with the corners. Detailing for the statue, just going straight up. Uh, cobbled deep slate right on top of all that obsidian, like so. Never mind the infill. Uh, back here, detail for the wings. Almost done with the statue there. All right. Uh, different detailing now. We got upside down stairs on the edges here. That's because the, the roof uh, from this point onwards no longer has four-way symmetry. It only has uh, two-way, meaning that if we, if we draw a line down the middle here, then it's going to be symmetrical on either side that way. All right, next phase, detailing for the roof of the towers. In the home stretch now, we're, we're all the way up to the roof of the towers. Uh, a, a, lot of the, a lot of the body in there was, I went pretty quick because it was pretty repetitive, very simple patterns. So I don't think you'll have any trouble building that. I'll have to slow down a little here for the roof now. We do have some half slabs here, by the way, up there. Uh, but again, it does have symmetry, so any way you want to slice it, if you want to slice it down that way, it's symmetrical, or if you want to slice it down that way, it's symmetrical also. Uh, but I, I don't think it has, well, it might have four-way symmetry, actually, still. I think it might. I may have misspoke on that. You, but uh, I just left all this hollow in here. I didn't bother to fill it with anything. Um... I just left it, you know, filled with air. There's not any blocks in there, so if it's uh, that's not included on the filling solid 14,000, whatever that was. I just left it in an empty, an empty roof. I didn't do any detailing on it because there's no real way for you to be able to climb up in here. You could make a way, perhaps, if you wanted to with a ladder or something. It'd be a circuitous route, but I think you could do it if you wanted to. But it's just kind of unused space, just, you know... If you're doing this uh, in survival, just throw down some torches right there so um, you don't let stuff spawn. That'd be really bad. All right, uh, next level up. We are almost done with this statue. All right, next level up here. I'm going to try and start somewhere along the center line on, on this side over here above the entrance. To be consistent. Next phase. Next level up here. Not sure how long it's been, but I do want to fit this all into one video, so we're just going to go till the end. Even though this probably should have been a two-parter. Given its size.
Next phase. Minor detailing on the stairs. Alvin stairs can get a little intricate at times. It's meant to replicate um, uh, fine uh, carved stonework. Very delicate uh, tracery. Mirroring, of course, the, the high elves themselves are very, very graceful and delicate people. And of course, their building should reflect that. This statue, I forget however many more blocks, is going to go up on the wing tips there. We're almost done with that thing. Detail block, glowstone here, next phase. Uh, did that finish? All right, so we had uh, now at this level here, we had just finished with two more blocks. There we go, two more blocks of our high elven, of our large high elven statue pouring out a spell of water right into the middle of your harbor there. Uh, indeed, the entire docks is kind of, uh, it kind of frames the central statue. I think it, um, I think it's a, a very good place to have one of those. I was originally just going to do like the side pavilions here. It was going to be the entire Elven Dock. But then I thought, well, no, you probably really, really want the deluxe model. So I just expanded it out a little bit and added the central statue there. I think whenever we do the Roman docks, we'll probably do a similar design for that, just in the Roman style. And any other docks you want to do, you could follow this similar pattern, this little, this little U-shape. Uh, here and just add whatever sort of detailing you might want to that. If you feel like, um, if you want an, an idea, but you also would like a little pattern of something to follow, you can try and do this design here, but do it in a different style. That'd be a pretty, pretty interesting challenge for you, I think. Uh, because I do like to recycle things. Not broken, don't fix it. Like so. And of course, uh, we're done with that statue. So now we are, we are only building now the roof of the tower. To finish off, we are really in the home stretch now. Only a few more phases left to go. They're going to go pretty quick, I think, once we get past the ridge line of this roof. Like so. Next phase. Over here. Getting quite narrow now. Next phase up from that, we want to add, of course, the ridge line, which is the straight line of blocks there. We do have a few extra over here, though, for the roof to come up to its pinnacle. Go to the next phase here. We have the little decorative finials on the end of the, uh, the projecting eaves of the high elven roofs. And uh, these, uh, these blocks here to form the base for our uh, pinnacle. There, cap those off with two stairs on either end, and that is done. And now we're only looking at this portion here in the middle. Just uh, four blocks, four half slabs there. Next phase after that, uh, four blocks and uh, four slabs placed there, a cross pattern. Uh, next, um, yep, no. Next phase here, four stairs and a central block. Then invert the stairs for that phase here. Four blocks of blackstone on top of that. Four more stairs on top of that with a block of glowstone. 
and then four more stairs with a central block of stained glass right there. And once you have done that and placed the final pinnacle, your high elven docks will be complete. So I hope you have enjoyed the tutorial for the high elven docks. Remember, everything's available as always in the video description for download for both Java and Bedrock versions. And I hope it wasn't too difficult. It, it can buildings this large and complex can be and sort of advanced level difficulty build, but I hope you were able to do it in the end. I want to thank you very much for watching, and I will see you next time.